Hey, it's Natalie. Hey, Hey, y'all, it's Madeline. And I'm Autumn, and this is TWT. And today we have yet another special guest for you all. Today's topic will honor Hispanic Heritage Month at TWU. With me, I have our special guest, Dr. Figueroa. So, Dr. Figueroa, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself before we get started? Okay, so, so well, that is a very open question. Hello, everyone that are seeing me in the cyberspace uh, uh, as part of this podcast. And congratulations, Autumn, for doing this great initiative. So I'm Jorge Figueroa Flores. I'm the Vice Provost for Curriculum and Strategic Initiatives. I'm also a, a, a faculty member. I'm a professor uh, of bilingual and ESL education here uh, in, in the Department of Teacher Education at Texas Women's University. Um, I was born and raised in the enchanted island of Puerto Rico, which is located in the Caribbean Sea. Uh, uh, I don't know. I have, wh- what do you want to know, you know, specifically? So I have uh, uh, two wonderful daughters. One is 25. The other one is 24. So very happy to be here. Uh, my my beloved wife, Dr. Amareli Rosa Davila, also a faculty member here at Texas Hi. University. In the, she's an associate professor of social work. So yeah, we're happy to be here and happy to engage in conversation with you, Autumn. That is awesome. And again, thank you for being here. So my first question for you is how does TWU support their Hispanic and Latinx population on campus? So I think I think that um that the first of all, we are a Hispanic serving institution. So it, it is an intentional support that we have uh for our his Hispanic, Latino, Latina, Latinx students. Um, um it's, it's very important that we also make that um aware, um, not only through academic support services, but also in the classroom setting. Um, uh, but we have increased uh the 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 amount of faculty members that are Hispanic as well, so students can see themselves reflected on it, but also working with the curriculum and a curriculum that students can see themselves reflected as well. And uh, in addition, there's so many co-curricular activities happening and extracurricular activities that engage uh, students into great conversations and and specifically about their Hispanic, Latino, Latina, Latinx identity. And that has been great as well. There's a, a great work done by Dr. Becky Rodriguez and, uh, and her team in regards to different projects that they're doing in the Office of Student Life. And, and, and and you know what? And more and more, we're seeing more even executives uh, that are in, in Texas University, in Texas Women's University, that are Hispanic. Uh, my good friend, Dr. Javier Flores, the Vice President for um, Enrollment Management, uh, Dr. Monica Mendez Grand, the Vice President for uh, Student Life, um, Dr. Mark Hamner, a, a fellow Vice Provost. Uh, myself, fellow uh, right. uh, provost as well. So, you know, uh, uh, it's not only saying that we're a Hispanic serving institution, really we're we're resembling what a Hispanic serving institution should be. And that's so important, seriously. And then, so what are the dates of Hispanic Heritage Month? So, so, so it's really interesting because I, have, I celebrate Hispanic Heritage Year every year. As every you year, should. Right? <laughs> you know, so it's really interesting that uh, specifically the uh, in this in the calendar of events of the United States, they have put like uh, September fifteenth to October fifteenth uh, okay. specifically to be Hispanic Heritage Month. But you know, as a Hispanic. Uh, Latino, I I be, I I I believe that um uh, that we should celebrate not only Hispanic Heritage Month. We need to celebrate our Hispanic heritage every single day. That is part of who we are. That is where that that is what you know. Really, we need to be celebrating, celebrating, and engaging into conversations uh, between our own cultures. You know, to look for points. Uh, that are similar and those that are different. You know, to engage into discussions in order to make them better for our own community. Absolutely. So within your curriculum, do you kind of integrate that type of segue to kind of bridge the gap between Hispanic, Latinx culture and other cultures itself? So when you say about my curriculum, what do you mean specifically? Let, so I, let, guess, I guess you can elaborate on your department itself and what you kind of teach your students and then you can go from there. So basically, my, divi- my, uh, my the division that I oversee in academic affairs, uh, it is curriculum and strategic initiative. So in curriculum and strategic initiative, uh, specifically, we um, we oversee um, how the uh, the course the courses of the university, but also we oversee undergraduate education. 
and all the all the courses that engage and the programs that engage specifically in undergraduate education. Curriculum at Texas Women's University is faculty driven. So, so specifically, the faculty have uh, are the ones who are proposing changes, modifications, specifically to to each and every one of the curricular aspects. Of course, we always give recommendations. But going back to your question, um, specifically, it, it is just how the there's a, a sense of faculty uh, belongingness and, and faculty understands that uh, uh, we are Hispanic serving institution. Okay. So, so you know, some of the changes that's up to them due to their academic freedom, specifically on how they conduct their classes, but definitely we're seeing more and more, um, I will say, a more and more openness to, to engage into conversations, but also um, um, to integrate resources that uh, definitely uh, support you know, Hispanic students and all, and every every student as well. I think that our mission at TWU is is important because our mission is solid in regards on on how we adapt to and how we work with each and every one of the students. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely, and I I'm appreciative of that. And yeah. I am non Hispanic, even though my last name is Santos. Um, I'm from the Portuguese area. Um, so 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 you're not Hispanic, but you're Latina. No, I, none. I am actually half black and half white, <laughs> so I'm ethnically ambiguous. I like to tell. Uh, I will. I will say that that's fantastic. But one of the things that we need to make sure that people understand is that that the the I will say the seal of Hispanic here in the United States have been given to each and every one, uh, basically that is none. Sometimes not even Hispanic. You just mentioned one thing that I want to make already the the uh the, the important part that yeah. when we talk about hispanic has to do with the hispanic heritage and the spanish heritage that is inside of the hispanic being latino being latino involves so many other things being latino portuguese are latin i'm sorry um brazilians are latinos haitians people from haiti are latinos because it's that latin root that engage into what they do and mm -hmm. of course there's the ibero uh, uh, descendants as well so everything that has to do with ibero america so so the, the one of the things that that has to do with with this is to how we can um how we as I will say as academics can can engage into what is Latinidad and also Hispanic uh, Heritage Month in a very uh, a, a great way as well. <laughs> no, seriously. So I guess at TWU, do they have any specific classes about that or... Can you elaborate on that aspect? So, uh, some of the, I will say that definitely um, um, part of, uh, of many of the, of, of our, of, of our courses engaging to cultural competent and cultural sustaining pedagogies or uh, culturally relevant pedagogies that engage into those conversations as well. Uh, it doesn't have to be direct, maybe it's embedded into, into the, the, the class or embedded into the curriculum. Like let's see, uh, uh, maybe a math, a math class is teaching you something that has to do with numbers that also engage into conversations that had to do with an event in a specific place in Latin America or, in, or that deal with Hispanics. So, so at, at least you're engaging into that. Also, of course, the other uh, social science, human and, and uh, specific classes that has humanistic studies and also, of course, the uh, education pieces where you are working and engaging into all this cultural competent, um, competence uh, that is necessary for, for, our for our students at TWU to understand and to engage with. Right. Um, and then my next question, I guess, for you, um, have you faced any type of challenges, if any, and how have you overcome them? Mm -hmm. Well, well, you know, um, yes, the question is, well, as a, as a person of color in the United States, uh, specifically, and I'm coming from specifically Puerto Rico, we, we have to deal with many different challenges. For example, yes, we... Uh, Everyone that is born in, in Puerto Rico is, is a U.S. citizen. That's something that everybody needs to know. But uh, we are the oldest colony in the world. Mm -hmm. so in Puerto Rico, you are the oldest colony in the world. So there's so many restrictions specifically that has to do with uh, voting, you know, to vote for, for a president that is not permitted. Yeah, we have a resident commissioner on Congress uh, that represents us, that has uh, no, no veto power. 
So uh, understanding the differences, you know, of of uh, and navigating uh, in the United States specifically in the system and getting out of the bubble of the colony and going into the mainland uh, was definitely a, a I would say an adventure uh, yeah. that had so many so many rocks in the way. You know what I'm saying? So 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 I did I did my my graduate studies specifically in the United States okay. as well, and yeah, I had I had had to deal with not only not only the difficulties that every other student. Uh, uh, of color has 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 brought to life you know right. from from food food disparity opportunities for work uh the problem that of course the language barrier uh uh that we because in puerto rico our first language is spanish we're we're a u.s territory or how we call it really a colony but uh we speak spanish yeah. so 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 you know that that accent immediately things so many things and 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 take questions specifically okay. of course i had to deal i had to deal with racism you know that's something that happens you know i uh, i i remember dealing with um uh, with situations where a couple of my of colleagues of mine will tell me hey uh jorge don't speak here because okay. you might be light you might be light skin but your accent is going to raise so many questions yeah. and this was not on a southern state it was on a northern state who sometimes we think to you know uh, to think that they're going to be more flexible in regards to things and and, and dealing with things and on also navigating um academia and also the part that had to do with navigating higher education in the united states of course you know i i um i've had great opportunity to uh, to work with with great colleagues as well but navigating higher education as a as a hispanic as a and a person of color is not is not easy you know in a predominantly uh, white anglo uh a system so you know i have been fortunate enough to to you know to be here at TWU where uh the doors have been open uh for me to engage in conversations and continue my growth as well as a leader and also when i want to say is that it's given me the opportunity to also mentor so many uh, students, but specifically Hispanics as well, and also faculty that uh, would like to engage into future positions as well. And that, you know, has given me a, a springboard to help and mentor things that I didn't have. See, right. my my first mentor uh, that looked like me, I had it when I was already a faculty member back in my homeland in Puerto Rico. So so it took a long time for me to to engage into and have a mentor that look like me and that ha had so many other difficulties. Right. Yeah. And I think that's what makes TW unique, like you were stating earlier, is that people that look like you, I think it's so important that students see that, that one day they can be in your position one day and, and further. You know what I mean? Because sure. I just, I think our university is really special in that way. So yeah. mm -hmm. I guess my next question for you is, so how can we continue honoring this important, I guess, year? How can we keep, you know, implementing Hispanic heritage things within our daily routines and, you know, letting people know about it? How, 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 what would you say? I will say, for example, that um, we need to reach our communities. Okay. See, uh, first of all, we, we, as a, as a, a as as a university, we have a, a, the, the ethical commitment to engage into conversations and to better serve our communities. I need that we need to reach more our Hispanic community, engage with them, but also here in the university, I think the students need to raise their voice also and talk about Latinidad, talk about Hispanic, how it is to be a Hispanic, how, uh, and engage into conversations on how can we support uh, not only Hispanic Heritage Month, but how can we engage into that identity and how can we uh, support others as well by creating programs, by creating new projects, by engaging in 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 research as well and 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 doing so many things. I think that the university provides so many ways that we can definitely um, you know continue honoring or 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 making you know um, things you need here. Oh, absolutely. So do you have any other, since we are TWT, do you have any other tea to spill before I let you go? Another tea? <laughs> any other oh. important information that you think that the viewers that are going to be listening to this podcast should know? You can list your favorite fact about Hispanic Heritage Month, anything under the sun that you want to state. I think, I think that um, one of the things that I would like is that uh, to hear is that we... It, 
I think we all need to learn more about each or one of our cultures. Uh, our cultures are unique. And also, and also uh, specifically, I think that uh, we Hispanic need to be proud of, of our culture. Uh, our culture here our, is, is divided into what is a pre-Columbine culture and post-Columbine culture. And that's very important because the pre-Columbine culture, culture is essential. It's a millenary culture that we as Hispanic need to engage and to embrace and not to forget about it. Uh, and also the post-Columbine culture as well. So it's very, it's very important that we have that and that we engage into those conversations with people, with our parents, with uh, the community itself, but that we never forget where we come from and the vast heritage and the, uh, that we have in our repertoire as part of our cultures. But definitely conversations between our, our own cultures in order to be stronger in the United States is something that we need to engage with. And you heard it best, everyone. I love that so much. All right, everyone, that concludes our episode. Thank you so much, Dr. Figueroa, for joining me and educating us on Hispanic Heritage, I guess, year at TWU. So I learned so much. And everyone, this is Autumn. And thank you all for listening to yet another podcast of TWT. Until next time, pioneers. <laughs>